Hi there, this is Sister Caroline. I'd like you to join my husband, Pastor Joshua Owens and I for Miracles Today, every Wednesday at 12 noon. We will be talking about how Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means miracles are still for today. Join us every Wednesday at 12 noon, right here on 1320 AM WCVG and FM 103.9, The Voice. Welcome to Miracles Today. I am Sister Caroline. I invite you to join my husband, Pastor Joshua Owens, and myself for Miracles Today. Let's join in to today's program. Hey, everybody. What's going on? This is Pastor Josh. And this is Caroline Indila, and we are with Mr. Jeff. Brother Jeff. Hello there. Yeah, I love, <laughs> I love I that love voice. It. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, it's great to be here. The wife is back. Uh, Brother Jeff is always here. So yeah. uh, it's going to be a good show today. We want to encourage all of our listeners uh, to visit our website, mosthopedeliverance.com. Look at the changes uh, that's taking place in and around the community. Go to the testimony section and look at the testimonies. Follow the links to YouTube. Follow the links to Facebook. You see pictures of people getting healed, uh, radical life changes. Uh, people with severe pain, severe arthritis, uh, grinding bones, disabilities, uh, being radically healed uh, through the power of God, His love and mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's always a key element is that they're, the people are coming, they're hungry, they're desperate, and they believe that God is their only chance at a miracle. That's right. He's their only shot, and He is their ever-present help in a time of trouble. And that's what uh, I'm saying to you today, to the listeners, that God is your very present help in a time of trouble. That's good. Uh, we also want to encourage you to donate, pour into the ministry. Uh, we recently had just sent out uh, 30 books over to a penitentiary in Auckland, New Zealand. So now uh, our books are global uh, inside the prison systems. So that's really exciting. They had reached out, uh, and that was very encouraging. And then uh, we were invited to go into Lebanon Correctional Institute, which is a max prison uh, in Ohio, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. On February 11th, we have a service. Uh, but what's really neat about that is they also requested, and we had sent in 80 books. So we're going to go in there and sign the books. And now a lot of people know that I wrote that book, a uh, big section of it while I was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a, a, an amazing time. It's going to be exciting for me. And ultimately, why? Because I'm going back to a place kind of where it all began. Uh, and, you know, so I'm excited to pour out into that place. So, again, visit the website, mosthopedeliverance.com. Many different ways you can get involved. Many different ways you can uh, pour into the ministry. And last but certainly not least, we have Sunday service every night at 6 p.m. If you come in one way and you're looking for a miracle, man, as to God's word is my witness, don't come back void. If you're desperate and willing, uh, you can leave different. Yeah. I say that confidently. But today we're going to talk about something that's completely life-changing and life-altering. Last week we talked about the spirit world. Uh, this week we're going to kind of dig in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And we had a to topic this morning about divine appointments and how God don't waste anything. And uh, But some other things kind of came up in the car on the way in here. And we have to understand that the kingdom of darkness mimics everything of the kingdom of righteousness. Yeah. Satan can't create anything new. Uh, he can't. So he mimics it. So just as God doesn't waste anything, uh, spirits don't waste anything. Demons, no. whatever you want to call them. And, you know, we have free will, and God gives us free will to choose this day whom we will serve. 
Uh, but the kingdom of darkness, the demons, they want to literally rob you of that free will. Mm. And they'll do it by any means necessary because they come to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. And many people hear me say before that we play chess, they play, I mean, they play chess. We play checkers. In other words, the type of knowledge that they have, it's unprecedented. I mean, we can't even begin to understand it. I mean, they're super intelligent beings. I mean, you could take the person on earth with the highest IQ ever, and demons make them look dumb. Yeah. I mean, just, just. I mean, they, they, they think not two moves ahead or like a chessboard. They, they, they're smarter than AI. I mean, these things are Google on steroids. They, they're thinking a thousand moves ahead. Mm. And a lot of the times in life, we read in the Bible that God visits the iniquities of our fathers onto the third and fourth generation. And we're going to talk about familiar spirits. We're going to talk about Freemasonry. Uh, and that's a touchy subject because, remember, Freemasonry, a lot of people are drawn into Freemasonry because it's a band of brothers, uh, and that's what they're sold. They're sold a lie that, hey, if you get involved into this, it's a band of brothers. We all look out. You'll have business opportunities. You see a lot of people in the police force, lawyers, judges. Uh, I call it kind of like the good old boys club. But what a lot of people don't understand is just because you're a lower level Freemason doesn't mean that the higher level Freemason rules still don't apply. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you... Uh, <clears throat> Or a Christian, you serve God. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got born again today, and I'm talking about Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you're a pastor in the pulpit casting demons out, healing the sick. It doesn't matter. You serve the same God. So whether or not, you know, you just became a Freemason today or you're, as they would say, some 33rd degree high-ranking uh, person, yeah, the, maybe the 33rd high-ranking person has been through more rituals, uh, gave up more of themselves, uh, made more covenants and oaths and, and cost, you know, gave up. And they might have even gave up a sacrifice. Uh, who knows? I mean, this stuff's real. Uh, you're still tied to the same ruler of that Freemasonry. And that's Satan, because all Freemasonry is is modern-day Satanism. And when you people have uh, family members that uh, were involved in Freemasonry, one of the leading things of Freemasonry, as soon as you get initiated, mm -hmm. is, yeah, you pray over the Bible and they tell you they read the Bible, but what they don't tell a lot of people is they replace the name of Jesus with Lucifer mm -hmm. and that he is the light bearer. So they, they'll even manipulate it and take out Jesus and say, yeah. you'll say the light bearer. And this is the very first thing that you, the very first stage of initiation Mm -hmm. And now if you ask any Freemason, they'll tell you that's a lie, that's a crock. But, I mean, I've uh, studied Freemasonry yeah. extensively. There, actually, there's a book uh, written by Albert Pike, the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And uh, There was also, what was the name of that guy <clears throat> you once mentioned that he exposed everything and then he went missing? Uh, I forget his name, uh, with uh, a lot of those videos, you will see how you yeah, know, but this one was give, good. Yeah, insight into the the temples, although what is it, the Masonic lodges, yeah, and how they have a big King James Bible in the middle of it, just showing you how much mockery this, you know, the society has towards God and towards you know Jesus Christ, and that every person that would come there, they would sing old hymns, but like Josh said, they replaced the name of Jesus. Yeah. With Lucifer. And then you got, uh, you know, all the rituals and oaths. And remember, it's a secret society. Uh, so by definition, it's an occult. Okay? And you're not serving God of the Bible. It's not a good old boys club. And, mm. uh, you know, it, it, you'll swear on this encyclopedia of Freemasonry. You'll swear on the Bible. You'll read these things. And some of the things in this, this uh, the book, it tells you that, hey, if you expose this thing... Mm -hmm. uh, they'll take you out in a field and, and skin you, or they'll cut the top wow. of your skull open and allow, you know, birds and, uh, to, to literally, you know, eat your brain, you know, they'll, they'll tie you up. In other words, you'll die. Uh, and, and some of the oaths and some of the parts, and some of you people might think, and this sounds far fetched, but Hey, look at Hollywood. 
Uh, everybody knows about it. Most people know judges. And again, I'm not attacking anybody. God loves everybody and wants all to come to a place of repentance. Uh, but what I'm sharing with you is that when you have this stuff in your family and you think it's innocent and harmless, you're mm. picking up powerful demons that come to steal, kill, and destroy. And as I was saying, one of the parts of one of the rituals is you drink uh you know, some, I don't know if it's blood or what, but you drink something out of a skull. And people say, oh, that's not a real skull. It's just, you know, make-believe. No, 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 it's a real it's skull. Real. And they tell them, hey, if you expose this, uh, this may be your skull. Yeah, if you know also, many people who were once involved in Freemasonry or any secret society um, or people that were in the occult, one of the leading things that happen to them when they leave out of that, it's either that they will get killed, right, or they will become, they'll completely lose their mind. Right. Because the society is at risk of being exposed and, you know, their secrets and their practices being exposed. So that's one of the things that many people always notice and always note and always say that, hey, if you get involved in this, there's no coming out. But we see that, you know, by the mercy of God, that people who've really repented and sought God are, were able to come out of it. But their personal testimonies also tell you that it wasn't easy, that the enemy didn't just simply want to let go of them. Like Josh said, because they entered into a covenant with Satan They've even brought their families that haven't even been born yet, generations to come from them. They've also initiated them into that covenant. So once they break that, Satan's option is either to kill them, or if they don't kill them, it's to, you know, make them lose their mind completely. Yeah, and... It's because they pick up spirits in the brain and yeah. body, and they invoke demons into themselves. And when they're uh, getting initiated into these things, they pick spirits up. One of the biggest signs of Freemasonry, and I was trying to find that video on YouTube so I could give that guy's name. Uh, but I remember when I studied this stuff, it took me probably a couple days before I came across it. It was buried. Uh, but one of the biggest things, as you see it in Hollywood, is they've got the one eye covered up. And for those that are listening to us, you'll start looking at these things. Uh, and that's a sign of Freemasonry or the, the finger, you know, the shh sign when they put their, you know, the, the index finger over their mouth or they'll cover their ears. And that's because they hear no evil, see no evil, they speak no evil. In other words, they're sworn to secrecy. Mm. You also see these things of, uh, you know, Freemasonry is a part of the Illuminati, but you see this stuff in the humiliation rituals. I think there was a, a pastor guy, uh, Ken Fish, I believe his name was, or something like that. Uh, he, he did a great big documentary. He was a Freemasonry and then renounced it, exposed it. Billy Graham was even a Freemason. And back in the day, there was a lot of pastors out there that were Freemasons that later on repented mm -hmm. and exposed it. And Billy Graham shares a video uh, or a teaching about the exposure of Freemasonry and the wickedness of what it was. Now, here's a man that saved souls of millions of people. Well, he didn't. The Holy Ghost did, but mm -hmm. he used them. Um, but again, was an act of Freemason. And again, we have lots of Freemasons in the churches today. But again, because people are ignorant to the spirit world, when they pick these spirits up and they swear these covenants and the oaths, uh, they're signing over things of their family down the generations. Yeah. So great grandpa's a Freemason. Mm -hmm. He climbs the ranks a little bit. Uh, and then you'll find out that generally his dad's a Freemason, his son's a Freemason, and you'll see this go on down the generations. generations. Yeah. And generally a lot of them are involved in law, lawyers, uh, judges, some positions of high-ranking Ranking. something, whether it's Fortune 500, elite companies. So people are drawn to that. And in Cincinnati, Ohio, they have uh, these commercials about, you know, kind of like a club. And it's kind of like a members-only club, but I'll never forget the commercials. So some guys in $1,000 suits, I mean, these suits were nice. I like suits. I watched this commercial. I said, my gosh, what is this commercial? This guy's playing in a pool table. He looked like he's in some elite special 
uh, something like like Harvard or something, you know, like like mm. you know, I'm and I'm man, you know, I'm thinking before I say Harvard, I think of George Bush, Skull and Bones, uh, you know, Barack Obama, all of them were Freemasons and initiated. They started out as Freemasons and then were initiated one through, you know, things like the Illuminati and stuff like that, the Bilderberg group, the Rothschilds, and climbs the rank. But I was watching this commercial, and there's some a, a good-looking woman, a woman, and she's serving them this drink with liquor in it. And I mean, man, a young man, this is appealing. Uh, hey, be a part of this club. Be a part of this social elite status. You know, come down here, and it was a, a Freemason commercial. <laughs> they were literally, you know, hey, come join this band of brotherhood. They sold the beauty of it. Oh, it looked, it looked nice, man. <laughs> I was, I'm going to be honest. I said, man, that's a nice suit. The woman, I didn't bat an eye at. I mm -hmm. looked at that suit. I said, man, that's a good-looking suit because if you know anything about suits, you see someone in a nice suit, you recognize it. And generally, if you're wearing a three, four thousand dollar suit, you got to have something together in your life to be able to afford that suit. So there's a strong allure to uh, gaining power. Oh yeah, power, power. money, status. Mm -hmm. That's the selling point of it. Because top leading thirty three degree masons are not just your regular folks. These are yeah. ru people who are ruling, who are leaders in the world, powerful wealthy. leaders, make, wealthy, making decisions that affect the population. Yeah, the chief of police. Making serious, um, and I actually have this article here, right, that has been released, it was, I think a day ago, by Routers, and it says that, Elon Musk's Neuralink implant brain chip in the first human being. Yep. Mm. So we look at the seriousness of, you know, this. It just starts as something as, it's just a society. But if you look at the back end on what they're actually doing, right? If you look at the way the Bible describes even the end times and the things to come, you can see the agenda of the enemy, you can see how he is actively working. You can see it being built. You can see it being built. So what really caught my attention about this chip, okay, it is a chip that is surgically placed in the brain as a computer interface in the region of the brain that controls the intention and move. The neural link said previously, adding that its essential goal, so their goal of these, this chip is to enable people to control a computer um, or keyboard using their thoughts only. And then the further goal is that basically, the aim is so that people's brains can become Google. And I remember Josh um, showed me a documentary. I think we watched it a couple of weeks, of, weeks ago, studying the giants of the past and how that even links with AI and artificial intelligence that's currently being pushed right now. And how the main goal yeah, of... Yeah, the super soldiers. Yes, the main goal of all of this, if you look at even AI in itself, it just completely goes against God. It's about people always wanting control, wanting power, wanting to be their own God. Yeah, and what you're saying is great, and it's tying in perfect here, because when we go back and, and think about Freemasonry and yeah. and the AI and Elon Musk, uh, we're drawn. There, people are drawn mm -hmm. uh, to the illusion and deception of power and prestige. Yeah, you know, my gosh, if I in. just yeah, if I had this this AI interlink, I'd be the first person in the world. Yeah, uh, I'd I'd know everything. I could beat everybody at chess, but they don't understand that they're becoming a god of their own imaginations. Yeah. Uh, and the first rule of Satanism, according to uh, Aleister Crowley and even Albert Pike, who, who again was one of the founders of Freemasonry, says, uh, it's do what thy wilt. Mm -hmm. You know, so do what thy wilt. In other words, do what I want. It's Fol sec secular humanism. That's it, man. Follow your heart. It Nowhere goes, in the Bible does it say Yeah, it goes that. completely against Christianity. Because Christianity, number one, Jesus says, if anyone wishes to follow me, first let them deny themselves. 
pick up their cross and follow me. So where Christianity is all about self-denial, right? Love, loving God first with all your heart, loving your neighbor as yourself, laying your life down for your neighbor. On the other hand, we see <laughs> that Freemasonry, the occult, you know, things of this world, it's all about self, power, control, riches, betrayal, e betraying each other, doing whatever, you, like he said, yeah. your own will instead of God's will. And the number one um, definition of mm -hmm. a cult is to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Mm. That's it. If you deny Christ as being the Son of God, then you cut yourself off. Mm. Instantly. Instantly. And, and those who are in an occult... Uh, they, you know, deny the deity of Christ by worshiping Mother God, mm -hmm. uh, even Mother Mary, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, you're denying the deity of Christ and you're worshiping something other, you're placing that as deity in your life. This yeah. is idolatry. Yes. Idolatry. And what we're leading here is that familiar spirits are behind all of this. These are super powerful spirits. Uh, they can get in the brain and body. They can cause sickness and they can cause disease, um, but they highly operate behind things like false religions. They designed all the false religions. Uh, they're super smart. They're highly intelligent, uh, and they're the ones behind the scenes running these things. Yeah. And when you're involved in this and you transition and start to go through deliverance, mm. you know, you repent, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, there's they they just don't just let you go. Yeah, they just don't. Oh, oh, you it's send okay. you okay. Send you away with oh a gift gosh, basket. Sister, sister, <laughs> sister Caroline don't like me no more. Let me uh, yep. let me just pack up and go. Here's a here's a gift basket. Here's a gift basket. Yeah. It Call has me a Bible. It has yeah. a journal, a prayer journal. Go along. And yeah. coupons. <laughs> and yeah. coupons. Yeah, coupons. Yeah, <laughs> buy one get one free. Uh, but that's what they give you for the spirit world. Hey, when you come back, if you want one, mm -hmm. we'll give you one for free. Yeah. Uh, and they just don't let you go. Okay. And what a lot do they of, do? Well, a lot of the times, uh, the Christian, the born again believer, will uh, start having dreams. Some, you know, might be snakes, water. They might have some weird illnesses. You see that a lot with occult back mm -hmm. problems, some weird tumors, brain issues, mental illness, weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, tingling, spine on fire, uh, just weird stuff. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that they start going through deliverance and the spirits coming out. A lot of the familiar spirits, they'll run hide inside the body. Yes. And they'll lay dormant. And then what they do is they work with other spirits uh, in and around you and other people mm. that have spirits to orchestrate your fall mm. because they want you to, they, they're just not going to leave and they're ultimate, you back. they want you back. Yeah, because remember the people that were there before you, right? Or let me say your grandfather or they whatever. They made a covenant. They made a covenant. So the demons are under the, you know, belief and operation that you belong to, to them, them yeah. because of that covenant that was made. Yeah, and, and they're enforcing it. And they're enforcing it. Yeah, so because of that, they're going to try everything. They're not, like he said, just going to let you go. And they know what you like better than you, you know what you like. Mm. And they've been watching you since your life. Heck, they're the ones that gave you your problems and then helped you with the solution. And they don't like you getting saved. They don't like you going to church, but they'll tolerate it as long as they're not at risk for losing their home. And they'll even kick out weaker spirits so they can remain dormant, so they can set you up for failure down the road so all of their buddies can come back in. Mm -hmm. And what you don't understand is that when you're playing in the spirit world, it's not a game. Mm -mm. You can't go out and watch pornography. You can't go out and live in sin, fornicate, and then go home and do some self-deliverance or some cast outs and think that, hey, oh, I'm good today. I cast them out and then have a run of a week or two and then repeat the same process because there's no repentance. And what the individual don't realize is the demons are behind this whole thing because they know that, hey, every time they kick some out, uh, they that person is held accountable and realizes and knows and now is confessing yeah. what they're doing is wrong. 
So they're taking accountability in the spirits that are in them. Again, they don't like kicking them out. Yeah. Uh, but the stronger ones will sacrifice them because they'll know that in a week or two they're going to entice them again. And then when they come back, the more powerful ones are going to come back in. And then they know the person is going to feel not conviction but guilty. Yes. And that's a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they're going to do some self-deliverance again and think, and the demons are going to tell them you're getting away with it. Nobody knows you're doing good. And then they're going to kick some of the weaker ones out. And then as this process goes on, what the individual don't realize is over a longer period of time, their condition and state is getting worse mentally. Yeah. I'm not saying they're picking up mental illness, but what I'm saying is, is they're picking up extremely powerful mind control spirits that are searing their conscience to the severity of the situation and the criticalness that is taking place because now the familiar spirits are transitioning from the body and moving into the brain and completely dominating and controlling this person and have seared their conscience. Yeah, and one thing also that I've you know come to understand and realize is that With these spirits, they're so powerful that if the believer, once you come out of that, if you do not make that commitment to be completely sold out for Jesus, no matter what, the enemy will always have that hook in. Those mind control spirits, those antichrist spirits will do anything and everything possible with a, it's, it's like a long-term plan to slowly get that believer to stop maybe, you know, engaging, having intimacy with God, start forsaking a prayer time, reading the Bible, commun- communion, not going to church. Next thing they pump thoughts in, oh, God's not even real. You know, God doesn't love you. Is this making sense to get yeah. the person to start turning away from our the one source that will set them free, which is Christ Jesus? So if they can slowly get that person to turn away from that, eventually, in a couple years, they will start, you know, God's not real, right? These are antichrist spirits. These are the same spirits that want to pull these people back who were made, brought into a covenant years ago by their forefathers to get them to be now, you know, Draw, draw, yeah, they'll draw, they'll them, draw back them in into the Freemasonry, in the Freemasonry. through uh, lies that God lies. is rejecting yep. them, and they're not. And then they become atheists, and then it's the Bible doesn't make sense. The Bible just contradicts itself. It's a it's a game. It's a strategy. And if the person's not able to pick that up and identify that earlier, and you know, fight, continue fighting with the deliverance, and be seriously serious that every action that they make. You don't get a free pass. You don't in the get a free world. pass. You know, it's interesting in the in the description of the process of the demon spirits, um, more or less navigating their way to the mind. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because the mind is the seed of decision. Yeah, yeah. So, I receive of your free will. Mm-hmm. And and so they're trying to get to the place yes. where they can control your mind. mind. And if they get there, then they will make the decision of your will. Mm. Yeah, because the, remember, That's the enemy true. comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Manip- yep. Witchcraft is manipulation, domination, intimidation. It's control. Mm-hmm. God gives us free will. Yeah. He wants mm-hmm. us to come to him on our own free will and decide what we're going to do, you know, the desire, growing you know, intimate relationship with the Father. But the enemy, uh, he'll withdraw, and then like he said, he'll slowly lead back through an in route mm-hmm. into the mind to literally take, take over, over your free yeah. will. And what happens is as this process happens, uh, the person doesn't even realize, realize that they're slowly rejecting God's word, mm-hmm. slowly turning from the truth, and slowly believing lies because it starts simply with a seed or a thought, and then they use a feeling in the yes. body that's negative to reinforce that lie. Mm-hmm. And then that lie becomes the truth. truth. For the, person, for the person, but in reality, yeah. it's still a lie yeah. because it doesn't line, line up, up with, with God's words. word. Yes. But they'll act on that as truth. They'll act on that as truth. It's a false. It's a false truth yeah. that leads to a manipulated behavior. That's ultimate plan is to lead you down yeah. a path of destruction. Now think about the word. There's a way that seems right mm-hmm. unto a man, 
but the end result is death, it's destruction. One of these other things that you see frequently with people, uh, with these spirits, familiar spirits, witchcraft in their background, high levels of occult, uh, down the family tree, you always see, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 times, occasionally you don't, but you always see high levels of perversion. Hi, there's incest in the family tree somewhere. Yeah, it's because the sacrifices and the things that these people had to get into be, to be initiated were sacrifices of perversion, like high levels of perversion. So it is of no surprise that these things are now found. I read this book by, what's the lady's name? I believe her name is Rebecca mm-hmm. Brown. Um, which talks about he came to set the captives free, and she literally exposes, you know, the the Freemasonry, the Brotherhood, and the Sisterhood, and the Eastern Stars, and all these things that are happening. But she's exposing it from a first-hand perspective that she was there and experienced it and, you know, was able to just, you know, go through that and understand it. So she's seen it firsthand. And she speaks about how when these people get initiated. For, so the testimony of the lady, her name is Esther, mm-hmm. who was Satan's bride, okay? Um, that's actually a thing where Satan promises. And it's so funny because in the end of the there's book, a she talks bride. about, yeah, she's like, there's a bazillion bride. But that's just a decep- this deception of Satan. And it also shows you how rejection is such a, do you get what I mean? If people don't deal with that spirit of rejection, because Satan comes in, oh, I'm going to accept you. You'll be my bride. Yeah, then that's he what he did. Things. And he gives them things. And this people, this person is now, you know, feels good, feels puffed up. Oh, I am, I belong somewhere he's accepted me and when they had their yearly convention she came to realize that oh but satan has a bride in every region (laughs) and instantly she felt betrayed but that's what he is a massive deceiver and she spoke about how the things that they had to do for that initiation was high levels of perversion I mean, where you've had animal sex. Yep, I mean, it, bestiality, it's yeah. incest, child sacrifices, kidnapping, very graphical, very real perverse things. That's why when these things are now passed on to the next generation, it's of no surprise that you said that a lot of times you'll find that it's mind control spirits working with perversion spirits because of the degree of perversion, the degree of manipulation, witchcraft, the degree of evil that goes into this. So it's not just uh, an appealing ad on TV inviting you to join this brotherhood or this sisterhood. Of yeah, every piece of it plays a, social, a part. The alcohol, yeah, the woman, mm-hmm, all of it. All of it. It's way more than that. And once you're in there, once you've agreed, once you've understand, once you've signed that. Yeah. And, you know, anytime an individual is watching perversion, and I, I want to share this uh, before we continue, is people think pornography is innocent. Now, remember, the body's got five gateways. So the spirits, the spirits will come in through your gateways, your mm-hmm. senses, as whatever you say, you know, your taste, your touch, uh, your smell, your sight, your hearing. Uh, we know that Christians, uh, demons can't put curses on people unless they have open doors. So they use secular music to get Christians to sing secular songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hotel California, Led Zeppelin, all this stuff. And for what? So that way they can curse themselves. Um, and, you know, things they watch on TV. Uh, you you watch a Harry Potter movie. It's, you know, big warning in the beginning, spellbinding uh, you don't get a free pass. Yeah. They're telling you what they're doing, just like they tell you in Hollywood, just like through all the exposure teachings. Uh, and then you engage in it, you're held at a level of accountability. So spirits will enter in through the eye gates, things you hear, uh, taste and touch. I mean, you know, even things you smell. And that's why they'll trigger memories. But my point is with the things you watch is that when you watch things that like uh, uh, pornography, Uh, Over a period of time, it always starts out when a child has a nudie magazine, and then it leads to a movie, or maybe it just goes straight to the movie. Uh, But regardless, as you feed that spirit, it gets stronger. Generally around the 7 to 10 year mark, the individual starts watching homosexual porn, 
uh, after about that 10-year mark, the individual generally starts venturing towards younger women or younger boys. It always leads into pedophilia after 10 years. Uh, there's bestiality somewhere in there around 8 to 10 years. And, you know, I know that sounds like a nasty thing that we're talking about on air, but I'll tell you this, uh, I see it weekly in the ministry. And it's, it's not, it's very, very common a matter of fact, I've, uh, these spirits, though, that they come in through pornography, uh, I was under the, the perception in the beginning that they just hid in the body to give them this unbridled sexual desire of the flesh. Um, but what I learned is that a lot of the times they'll move into the mind because, again, and they slowly sear their conscience and deceive them into going down other paths. And they'll even tell married men, hey, you're not committing adultery because you're sleeping with a man or an animal. That's not adultery. And these spirits are so powerful that hide into the brain that the person literally believes it. Yeah. And getting these spirits out of the individual's brain, man, it's like pulling teeth. And why am I sharing this with you? Because when you're dealing with familiar spirits, occult spirits, high levels of witchcraft, sorcery, uh, there's always perversion in the background. And again, these spirits slowly work themselves up into the brain to ultimately steal, kill, and destroy every aspect of, get your, of your life, get you to turn on God, and get you to serve Satan, as they say, do what thy will. And it's, it's, all, it's all, I mean, it's a delusion. The, the behavior is very real. The occult is very real. The Freemason is very real. Yeah, um, and the interesting thing is that with, with these type of things, we see that there's, there's a level that these people get to because of these spirits that control them where they become numb. They exist. They right? just exist. They just exist. So there's no sense of yeah. What's pedophilia? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing what I'm doing is wrong. There's no check or conviction. There's no check. There's no conviction. For the people who are perpetrating this on people, yes, setting up this environment, that mm. also leads to control of the person. Mm. Because if it ever got out that that person was doing something, it would ruin their career or it would ruin. Yeah everything else right so they they don't realize that mm. they're being set up for a fall oh yeah <laughs> they got handlers you yeah. know is what i'm calling so in the spirit world uh y and you'll see this with high high codependent uh mothers and and daughters or men and father you know i'm not just saying women i'm just using that as an example so don't send me an email Okay, don't, you know, I'm just going to use this as an example, but uh, the mother will have high levels of witchcraft in her background, and she'll literally live vicariously through the daughter. But what the daughter doesn't understand is she's trying to go through deliverance but can't break the soul tie with the mother because they're so codependent. The codependency isn't the problem. The problem is, is that the daughter's under a spell because the mother's got a controller demon that's controlling the daughter. I'm talking about witchcraft here, powerful witchcraft, familiar spirits. So we see controllers in the government. Oh, that's my handler. Mm -hmm. We've all seen Jason Bourne. Yeah. Uh, but this happens in the spirit world. So when we've got, like what you said, the high levels of the occult, uh, they're bringing someone in, they're initiating mm -hmm. them. The spirits in that person are working with the spirits in the other person. They're drawing them in because they already know the other person desires prestige, power because mm -hmm. of a life of rejection or whatever it is. But then that per demons in that person that drew the other person in, they kind of become their controller. Mm. In other words, there's a type of soul tie that's developed that the individual, it's almost like they're under a spell. Mm. And then demons in that person that brought the other person in are now operating and controlling that other person. And the person that brought the other person in, keep following me now, I know I'm saying a lot here. No, you're making sense. 
is gaining power. Yeah. The demons in the person that brought the one in is now empowered yeah. because they've sacrificed that other person's soul and well-being and that person doesn't even realize, realize it because it. they're under delusion and deception. Yeah, you're completely right. Just like the book I mentioned earlier, that just confirms everything because this lady speaks about how you would have to get people in kill people let people do the most horrible thing and then that person's being empowered that person's demon basically is getting empowered it's getting she even said it would get stronger you would start having more supernatural abilities to do you know weird things wild things but what they don't know is that that person is literally their handler. So what seemed so enticing. So innocent. So innocent. It's just a, I can just go there. It's just a once a week gathering. It's going to, here's the thing. Everything, it, there's a cost. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to cost you your grandchildren. It's about, yeah, it's going to cost you. Like you said, that, you know, Satan just, like you, you said perfectly, he perverts, he twists, copies everything. Because we know when Christ highlights that if anyone wishes to follow me, let them deny themselves. There's a cost of denying yourself. That's rough. Right? To follow Christ. And in this other world, though, <laughs> there's a cost of sacrificing people, sacrificing love, there's still a cost. And the enemy still requires that sacrifice. Yeah, but instead of denying but yourself, it's, yes. you're feeding, you're feeding self. self. So it's the opposite, so it's the of, opposite God's of God's kingdom. kingdom. But it sounds very similar yep. in nature. But it's he, like again, he perverts it. He twists it. Counterfeit. counterfeit. Because it goes completely opposite of what God says. Because God's way, God's nature, just when you think about it, God's nature is truth. He is true. There is no lie found in him. Yet, on the other hand, Satan's a lie. That's all he'll be known for. He'll even take something, make you, like you mentioned earlier, Mr. Jeff, make that person believe that it's true, but it's a lie. Mm -hmm. He's the father of lies. He's the father of lies. Well, and he's been around for, again, I, I don't know, don't send me an email, thousands and thousands of years uh, since the beginning of time. I mean, he was even in the heavens mm -hmm. with the Father. So, I mean, you can't even put a number on that because one day is, is a thousand years. Uh, you know, one day with the Father is a thousand years on earth. So if he was up in heaven for, let's say, a thousand years, that's like a bazillion years here on earth. I, I don't know. My point is, is that he was up there with God, the Father, kicking it. And he, Satan is so good at what he does that he deceived and took one third of the host as angels with them. So when we have, we have to really understand and look at the level of intellect mm -hmm. that's being highly orchestrated and ran through this demonic kingdom so they can easily come up with things like Islam, Hinduism, all these uh, what, what Catholicism, all of it. The benefit for, for the average person, though, that, that knows God mm -hmm. is that God is omniscient. Yes. Mm. He's 100% knowledge. 100%. Okay, mm. whereas Satan might be very intellectual, yeah. he doesn't know everything. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. And, and he can only be in it. one place at one time. Yep. Right. Now, this, so the spirits, they'll sit and they'll audit you. Mm -hmm. But they still don't know what you're going to do because you got free will. Yeah, and here's right. the thing, that the... The enemy, right, because when we look at a person, God indwells our spirit, right, our spirit man, with the purpose and intention of leading, directing, guiding us. On the other hand, demons indwell the believer or the person, whatever, the non-believer or the believer, both, with the purpose to control. So Satan wants to control, take control of their mind, take control. That's why people say... I, it's not me thinking. It's not me that did this thing. I just happened to, do you get what I mean? Because it was like there was another force, another entity, something else that made them do the things that they do not want to do. So again, we see here two opposites, where God wants to lead, where God wants to direct, where God wants to show us. On the other hand, the enemy wants to control for destruction, for death, to kill, steal, and mm -hmm. to destroy. So when we look at these 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 spirits, 
they love operating. Satan's number one tactic, okay, is the mind. That's his way the battle takes place. Well, yeah, because if you control because, the motherboard yes, with so, the virus, you're going to control the whole computer. Yep. Yeah, so that's his number one. So when we are able to really, what the, how the Bible even instructs us to deal with thoughts, to deal with imaginations, to deal, there's a reason why. Um, What's that scripture in Corinthians? You know it. Second Corinthians chapter Share 10. Share that with us real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 3 to 5. I know you're always it's my it, so. favorite. And the reason Read it's the my thing. favorite verse is because God literally, he's so loving. He gives us a formula, a formula. Formula. Formula <laughs> <laughs> to overcoming the mind games of the enemy. Tell us that formula, man. So, so the formula I, says... While you're looking it up, I know you know it by heart. But <laughs> for, for the listener that knows somebody that's in Freemasonry, and I know we're exposing a lot here today, uh, but we're, we're, we're not trying to just heap on you. Mm. And we're going to share the the weapon right here, the, the, the solution for this. And like the sister said, uh, wherever you're at in your Christian life, whether you've got Freemasonry in your background, witchcraft in your background, maybe you got crystals in your house. Uh, none of that's from God, and you're breathing today, which means that you have an opportunity to mm. repent, apply the Word of God into your life, fight for your life, yeah. be set free from the bondages, and help your children and your grandchildren out. And press towards that mark of your higher calling, because if God is for you, who can be against that's you? True. But this is going to come at a cost. That's true. But before I, you know, go, I want to stop there, because I could start preaching on that. <laughs> Uh, but again, this Christianity is not for the faint of heart. And I know the listener is not faint of heart. It doesn't matter what they did in 2023, 2024. They want more and they're going to ready, they're ready to wage war Yeah. and they're going to fight for their life and fight for their, their, their heritage that's passed on down the line because they love God and they know that there's something better out there. They want that an exceedingly abundant filled life with joy, love, and true Christian prosperity, which only comes from the indwelling spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Amen. But give us that solution to overcome okay. this. Okay, so before I give the solution. I want to highlight something very important. Okay. We watched the movie called The Shift. Oh, it was a good movie. That was a good movie. People hated it. People I? hated it, but I feel like people who aren't in you know, don't see this or deal with this daily, like the spiritual side of it, spiritual warfare, then, you know, they would easily be on the side of, I, I didn't really like that movie. But once you really were able to look at it and say, wow, this is what Satan does. Mm -hmm. He works with num something, first thing, the mind, right? The thoughts. Look at it from the beginning, Adam and Eve. Look at it, Jesus in the wilderness. What did he attack? The mind. The mind. So in our lives, too, just think about every time Satan attacks you. It starts with there in the mind, oh. right? Something happens, a situation happens. Let's say I get bullied by someone, okay? And I'm going to use this example because we spoke about it a little before we came into studio today. I get bullied by someone, and now the thoughts, the enemy comes. Yep, they think you're weak. You have to show them. Just go out there, prove to them that you're something. The whole world needs to see you. Oh, yeah, you think God loves you. He doesn't love you. This is making sense. Thoughts. So if you're not able to identify those thoughts, guess what will happen? Tell us. Destruction. Yeah, because you're going to fall victim. Act out. You'll yeah. act them out. That's where he first operates. Before I take this bottle of water that's in front of me and decide to throw <laughs> it at Josh, there was a thought that was planted in there. She must have not liked the shirt. Right? Oh, look, he just looked at you funny. And the enemy also works, like you said, works with demons outside, inside, everywhere to get you to perceive something the way he wants you to look at it and see it and not the way God sees it. So instead of me looking at Josh and saying this is God's creation, who God loves, who God has created, I'm going to love him because he's my neighbor. That's instruction of God. And I now look at him and say, how dare he? Yup. I take this, throw it. So 2 Corinthians says, chapter 10, okay? 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, mm. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So every imagination, every thought, here's the thing, even if it's a good thought, I have to take it captive and examine it because a good thought can come into my mind, but that good thought too can be trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of, of God because that thought could be a thought that's trying to puff myself up, you know, pride self, push me up. And if I'm not able to identify, but that cannot even be done if we do not know the word of God. If I do not know the word of God, how can I examine and say, wait, this thought goes against what God is saying. Well, you don't because people uh, love wickedness more than they love the Father in secular society. Got it. And, uh, you know, so the Bible is clear that we have to study to show ourselves approved to be a workman. Yeah, that, so that rightly divides the word of truth that needs not to be ashamed. So go ahead. I'm so sorry. every thought that comes in, every negative thought, the formula here is to examine, take that thought. Wait, is this thought trying to go against what God says, what God is, God's knowledge, God's truth? And if the answer is yes, that means that's a lie. That's not from God. That means that's from the enemy, and I now have to cast it down, pull like it down, cut. and replace it with the word of God, the truth. Before we... Let me, let me say something before we go into this. I know... Uh, we, we're going to listen to a song here. How long is that song? Ten. Ten minutes? The song is ten minutes? Oh, okay, well, we'll close out with this. But in that shift, the movie, real quick, one minute, I'll close for all this listener. But great movie, but I want if you watch it, pay attention to how this man mm. uh, had thought he had met somebody and that was he was helping, and he thought maybe it was a divine appointment. And it seemed right, and it looked right. But... It was a setup from yeah. the enemy to prevent someone else from truly getting the truth. Mm. And he did it with a lie that looked to be true. And that's what we're saying to you today, that just because it looks to be true doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it is true. Ooh. So I want you to test the spirits. Ask God to give you the gift of discerning of spirits mm. and press towards that mark your higher calling. We'll see you next week, MostHopeDeliverance.com.